Hello all, this is Ramesh Lama. Today in this video lecture, we will be discussing about the scale invariant feature detector. Before we go more detail, let's see some properties of Corner, Harris corner detector that we have discussed in our previous lecture. Let's start with the rotation. If we have an image with the small corner and we rotate it, how would the Harris operator respond? Well, we have discussed about the formation of ellipse uh, from the moment matrix of gradients in our previous class. Here, the ellipse will rotate with the rotation of corner, but it will be same ellipse because the variation of gradients would be same over the window. So we can say that Harris corner detector is invariant to rotation. We can see here on the left side as well as on the right, right side uh, that corner forms ellipse but as we uh, like uh, the, the uh, we can see that the that the ellipse remains same only the orientation is changed so from this we can say that uh, ellipse rotates but its shapes that is eigenvalue uh, remains same and here is an example we take some picture and find corners on it then change the picture somehow and rotate it a little bit and again find some corners again and measure the repeatability and here from the figure we can see as the rotation of picture is varied all the way up to 180 degree the, rep the repeatability rate remains almost constant here the repeatability uh, is the ability to find the same corner in the rotated image and now we can see both algorithms Harris detector and improved Harris detector are invariant to rotation and uh, now we can um, let's see the response of Harris detector with the change in intensity if we change the intensity of image somehow, it depends on the uh, what happens to the current detection. Uh, as we know that the moment matrix is just made up of gradient in x direction, that is i x and i y gradient in y direction, and product of i x and i y. A constant, if a constant is added to the image with the change in intensity value doesn't change the derivative of that image. So the detector is invariant to the addition or change in the intensity shift. Uh, in case of multiplication, um, everything, uh, we multiply gradients so when we multiply, uh, like when we multiply gradients, we multiply R values. Uh, that's the, what's shown here in the image. We have uh, this R and it's multiplied here by some scalar value and here we can see that our values contain certain peaks which are above threshold if we were to scale the image by a scalar uh, only these peaks will grow but the same would uh, be that what the shape would be the same so only the things that we have to worry about is the threshold some points may go above threshold or below and that we can uh, that can be that we can uh, like we can say that uh, just by changing the threshold we can make it invariant to the multiplication so uh, next let's see the response uh, on the chosen scale or size of the image uh, let's see these pictures here we have two different curves on the left uh, on the left we have original curve and on the right the zoomed out version of the same curve and the little boxes on the both picture are the size of windows that we use in the corner detection now if we look at each of these boxes at the left side all the points inside the box will be clearly classified as being edges because it essentially there is a gradient only in one direction but if we look at zoomed out version 
uh, that is there is now a very nice corner we can see it, uh, it has a corner not only the edges now we can come to the conclusion that by changing this smooth curve by zooming out the curve becomes tighter and tighter and more tighter and it goes from being edges to being corner so in general the Harris corner detector isn't parent to the scale so here is a graph which uh, uh, which shows that the Harris corner detector is not the invariant to the scale let's see here like we can see on the graph that the repeatability rate falls down drastically as we change the scale by the factor of 2 so it has already lost almost 80% of repeatability so it's not invariant to scale and we're gonna have to do something to deal with it we can see here just as we as we uh, change as we change the scale by the factor of two the repeatability uh, goes down by the 80 percent so we must do something now let's see now suppose we want to scale invariant so how can i do that Now, we will start with the use of circle. Let's consider some reasons we are going to use the circles. Uh, let's take a curve and its zoomed out version. Uh, we, can, we get circles around these two curves. And when we look at the area covered by the curves in both images, we can easily say they do not match with each other. However, if we, if I we increase the size of circles here like if we increase the uh, size of circle bit step by step and we will reach at the point where both uh, the curves look almost same like the, the curve covered by the circle uh, uh, they will correspond to the same um, same curve and uh, both looks uh, almost same and where both span the same amount of the image like we can see here the small small circle and the big circle will span over the same uh, amount of the image so once we get this corresponding size curve of both images a problem arises like uh, uh, that's how to choose these circles independently because we have to be sure uh, about the appropriate scale for the images in the left side as well as in the right side here what we want to the what we want the case is the red circles are the scales we picked for the left ha left hand image and uh, like which is big circle and the scale that we picked in the right hand side is a small circle that's what we want to do and more importantly we want to do this uh, independently like we have to choose the circles the size of circle or the scale of circle that should be independently and in order to get independent scale <coughs> we are going to design a function uh, some function on the reason circle uh, which is scale invariant uh, the function will not be affected by the size but will be the but will be same for corresponding reasons even if we even if they are at the different sizes or the scales so the function uh, doesn't care about the, how big the circle is it just cares about the distribution of uh, values of pixels within the circle uh, that's uh, why we call it scale invariant a simple example uh, we can imagine the average intensity if we just take the average intensity over a circle um, that function doesn't care how big the circle is it's just gonna compute the function over whatever the size of the circle we give to it and for example if there is a constant gray value and if we keep moving the circles bigger and bigger and bigger the function will stay same no matter what is the size of the circle or scale However, if we uh, if we have the function 
that changes over the different corresponding regions then the function will go up and down as we uh, have looked over these different regions so and if i zoomed out uh, the for zoomed out I scale down or scale down that thing it would go up and down again but now it would go up and down faster as we grow our um, as we grow our circle or we move so imagine at a point we have compute one of these scale invariant functions like average intensity over the range of the neighborhoods and so we are at a scale at a single point and we are computing these functions f over the different region sizes we can see here i have got image one and i have i compute the average intensity average value for the uh, for the uh, in versus uh, region size like uh, and imagine um, at a point like we compute uh, this function this these functions and what happens here is we are at a single point and we are computing this function f over different region sizes we increase the region size and uh, we will notice that the it goes up like uh, as the region size increases it goes up and it reaches to some point uh, that is maximum and it goes down and now let's suppose in the next picture we shrink the um, image down by a half like we scale down the image by uh, half by two and we will now compute that uh, same function over the same region sizes like uh, we scale down the image and we compute the function with the increase in the size of the region and uh, like it may, it may be 2 4 or 16 and uh, uh, what we notice is it's gonna take the same shape but it's gonna get there faster like we see here that the uh, the curve or we can see the function it looks almost same in both images but what we see is it reaches to the peak value or like it, it, it corresponds very faster and which is why the function is essentially just a squashed version of the one in the left so uh, what that means is suppose we pick a maximum of the function uh, like we gonna call it s1 in the left image and we take the same function and um, at the point of the scale down image if we were to take the maximum here it would be the like it would be the of a different size because that image had been squashed in a half that would be s2 but these two neighborhood sizes would be covering the same region of the image between these two pixels and so they would be matching scales so the important thing here is we do each one of these things independently let's see uh, it in example like here uh, like we let's uh, see um, the illustration of that here is the image of charts in white and gray color and we will uh, what we can uh, see that the function of scale uh, and is for the maximum point we can see the this is the image and we estimate the function of the uh, we uh, like we uh, estimate the in average uh, intensity here and as we increase the scale or in, as we increase the region size it goes up 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 and it reaches at the point some maximum point and it goes down and as we see here the scale down or zoomed version of this small image and what we get is like we uh, same as in our previous uh, uh, like previous slide it it gets uh, almost same um, function but it reaches to there very fast but the most important thing is uh, like the 
most important thing here is the circles on the left and the circles on the right are the same component of the image like uh, we can see here like the circle of the this image and this image it, it correspond to the same image so mm, uh, so these are the skills that uh, to operate at and what we get is we get these scales or they, we get these values independently so in general uh, for the skill invariant detection uh, usually mm, no one uses the average intensity then what will we use and basically what we want uh, is uh, uh, we want to be able to find these maxima as a function of reason sizes so it would be bad if the large variation of reason uh, size the function stayed the flat like here we can see as we increase the size reason size but the function if the function stays flat it doesn't give us the proper uh, 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 proper uh, intensity proper uh, scale uh, information and another thing is uh, would be something that we call too much uh, we can see only three wiggles here imagine there are lots of wiggles because uh, we would like to find the maximum and we would be able to find really one or key uh, one or key maximum point uh, so if we get the uh, multiple wiggles or multiple maximum points uh, it also doesn't give us the a good uh, function of scale so uh, what we want is we want to get the function that uh, uh, gives us the um, uh, single peak uh, like uh, so we can see here in the last uh, um, picture uh, the last function it becomes the ideal function because we want to be able to see as the reason size gets bigger this function basically gives us a single peak again some of the ideas here are basically suggest that we can do this for most of the normal images and a good function would be the one that responds to the contrast or intensity changes in the image so uh, some of the widely uh, used uh, detector operators are just applying the differential operator kernels we just apply a kernel to the image uh, and use the output uh, as we uh, as in our previous class during our age detection lecture we discussed about the Laplacian of Gaussian the Mexican the Mexican head operator which, uh, which is given by this it, it has a function like uh, it has a equation here and it is the second derivative operator and we also talked about the zero crossings on that topic so um, that's the type of operator that uh, we can use now instead of doing the whole Laplacian of Gaussian which involves these the several derivatives uh, we can do something else which is called the difference of difference of Gaussian basically we take uh, out a Gaussian and subtract it from the another Gaussian with slightly with slightly different Sigma and we get a curve as we can see in the figure the plotted red curve is difference of Gaussian and the black one is the or uh, that uh, blue one is uh, the uh, Laplacian of Gaussian we can see that values are almost same so it's a lot more easier since we are computing these Gaussians anyway to uh, to just subtract things as we know the Mm, difference of Gaussian is circularly symmetric and it's uh, totally invariant with respect to the rotation as well and also to the it's uh, uh, invariant to the scale as well 